Now, we've met a bit of him already. Time to race through a few facts about our guest of the day. Now, Jody Schechter was the Formula One champion in 1979, and he hasn't slowed down since then. After 12 years at the racing wheel, he went to the United States to set up a firearms-related training company. Now, he used the money made from that business to set up in Laverstoke Farm in Hampshire. There, Jody looks after the business, which includes the largest herd of water buffalo in the UK, a mozzarella dairy, and a compost heap that covers around four acres of land. Very impressive, Jodie. Do come over and join me. Sounds like a lot of compost. Really? Do you need all of that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we put, uh, we are licensed to do 25,000 tonnes and it all goes on our land. All on the land. You yeah. know, it's quite a change you've had throughout your career from Formula One, first of all, to yeah. then setting up a business in the United States. What, was your, what were your challenges there? Well, in fact, uh, doing Formula One helps you a lot in, in other uh, areas. In Formula One, they uh, develop technology faster than any time in the world, even under wartime. So you learn to do that, and in business, you need to do that as well if you get your product out to the customer before somebody else. And so that helped me over there. And also, that was a training simulator and training for an event, whether it's racing or tennis or going to war or police. It's got the same fundamentals, so that helped me in that, that, that way. Was this always your dream, to move from, when you were in the United States with a very successful business, I think $100 million turnover a year, to come over here and set up a farm which actually you just seem to be pumping money into and not getting yeah. much out of? Um, well, it started as a, I mean, started really, I came back here, I was out of the business oh, well. and uh, said, OK, I'm going to produce the best tasting food for myself and my family. And this is your farm that we're seeing at the moment. And, yeah. But it is a money pit, isn't it? You're throwing money into it. How, um, how do you say committed to that? Well, um, I think if you produce the best tasting, healthiest food, if I'm prepared to do this, I think other people will be prepared to buy it. And so what we're trying to do is start it as a passion. There's no question about that. And maybe a dream and a passion. I say sometimes it's a nightmare now. <laughs> but um, it's starting to work now. People understand how good the products are. And we aim in a different direction to most other people, which is to pr produce the best without a compromise. And you're heading for a profit this year, do you believe? Mm, yeah, we have to. We have to. We, we are working really hard to, to make it profitable. I put a lot of money. I really started in another place. Most people started an ad agency. I started in the soil. And that's where my interest started. And then in the grasses and the animals. And, and I put an infrastructure in with a whole abattoir. And we've got three factories, one doing uh, mozzarella and ice cream. And then we've got one doing salami hams and uh, nitrate-free bacons and then we've got another one doing sausages and stuff like that so now we've got to get those all running efficiently and working so we can make it profitable You're, you do sell through the supermarkets through yeah. Waitrose what's the relationship that you see between other farmers you speak with and the supermarkets because often it doesn't seem a fair relationship at least when you're speaking with the farmers they feel squeezed particularly during a recession on prices yeah i think i think the supermarkets do they 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 in business they want to be competitive and they want to get their best prices and i suppose some of them are, are bullies from time to time um i must say uh, that hasn't really happened that much to me um, a little bit, squeezed <laughs> now and again, but I mean, I suppose that's part of a um, um, capitalistic system. And as a growing business, I notice you've employed more people during the recession. Yeah. Um, that seems quite surprising. Have you found that there's a decent workforce for you to tap into? Yeah, well, I, I find that a recession is a, the greatest time to hire people because people are um, glad to have a job and you can get good people at, at that time. And, and if it's not a recession, you know, people just walk out if you say something nasty to them. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, yes, in, the, in America, too, we, we grew through a recession. And getting the right people in the end is nearly the most important part in a company. So you have the right people in the business. Are you going to get more people buying the product in a recession? Because it's not a cheap end recession. It's, it's not a um, product. It's not a budget product, is no, it? No, no, it's above, above most things in price and hopefully quality as well. So how can you encourage people to buy that? Well, I think there's enough people that, that feel that food is, is important. I don't think it's only wealthy people. I think we waste a lot of food. Um, and also, if you look back in the last, what, 50, 60 years ago, I think it was 60% of a person's salary was spent on food. And now it's something like 10%. So it's all, what, what do you want to spend your money on? Decisions. Okay, Jodie, good to speak with you. Thank you very Thank much. You.